The Sharpie 500 from Bristol Motor Speedway, brought to you by Ford. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Discover Card, it pays to discover. Avalon, a Chevron Texaco product. And Budweiser, the best things in life are the things that are true. Budweiser. Just about 100 laps in before 164,000 fans. They've been camped here all week long. They were coming in here early this morning, milling around, having a good time, and now they're watching a lot of action in the opening one-fifth of this race. How about our Stacker 2 track pack? Been looking around at this great stadium. You know, when this, first, uh, this racetrack was first built in 1960, the land and the track construction cost about $600,000. Seated 18,000 people for the first Wednesday Cup race. When Speedway Motorsports bought the track, Bruton Smith's company in 96, he paid him $26 million for it. Now that's Seven a good year. investment, I hear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it seated 71,000 at the time. Speedway Motorsports bought it. Seven years later, 164,000. As a matter of fact, you and I rode up the elevator today with one of the original builders of this racetrack. Carl Moore, he and Larry Carrier. Yep. But kind of watching what's going on with Robbie Gordon there, Bill. What's up? Well, when he pitted Allen, he started to pull out, got stuck behind the four. When he stopped, his brakes locked up. They pushed him back and forth to try and get the brakes to work. They got him out, then the pedal went all the way to the floor. He was out on the track and said it's starting to get better, it's starting to get better. Make a long story short, they think a lug nut might have got stuck in the rotor, then worked its way out. Now he's got to work his way back to the lead lap. Yeah, Robbie's in 35th place. He's a couple of laps down. But where is it, Richmond? Last year, he made up like two laps this yep. spring and got a fourth place finish out of and it. And he's coming there, he's making a move on Skinner. So, I mean, he's wanting to be at least close enough where if something happens, he could get back by Jeff Gordon before start this one, get the lap back. Just past 100 laps, Jeff Gordon leads, Kevin Harvick second, Mike Skinner third, Mark Martin fourth, Ricky Rudd fifth. Ooh. Oh, three wide. Oh, Larry Floyd bumped yeah. by Jeff Green. Here we go. Those are three wide, just doesn't work. Oh, you know, we got another car spinning in the back. Joe Nemechek. And he gets hit by... Uh, that was uh, Bill Elliott. And Elliott got hit by someone. Now, watch Robbie Gordon. Robbie Gordon trying to get it back, but I don't think Jeff Gordon is going to give it to him back. Do you think? No. <laughs> so there we go. Spotters telling the drivers the cars are all off the track in the accident site, and they race back around to the caution. I don't think Robbie was going to get, or Jeff was going to give Robbie that. Money. There's that whole gentleman's agreement. Yeah, thing. well, mm -hmm. these two had a discussion about that. Yes, they did. A little while ago. <laughs> well, that one didn't take long to come out. Three wide does not generally work well here at Bristol, nor does it work well when one car gets run into the backup by another. Larry Boyd in the spin cycle along with Joni Machek. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. Okay, quick guess at home. Will the camera live through the accident? On board with Dale Jarrett. Check up. Check up. Check up. Check up. Easy, easy. All right, come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Uh oh. Ah, uh, made it. Jamie McMurray with the camera on the nose of the uh, Texaco Haviland car. What a great camera shot. Oh, and, and Dave Blaney just squeezed by. Back to green flag. Casey Mears, lap car to the inside of Jeff Gordon. Race leader not able to get around him and get back on the lead lap. 31 cars on the lead lap. Pit stops under this caution. Ryan Newman, McMurray, Joe Nemechek, Johnny Benson, Bill Elliott, and Larry Ford. We're all in. These guys need to run some last BP because we're hearing a lot of overheat. Yeah, they do. Our cars are warm. And at 35 miles per hour, the speed that the pace car running runs, they just don't get enough air through the grill to keep them cool. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Matt Kenseth, seventh and eighth places. Did you see Kenseth drive up on the outside of Jr., trying to go by on the outside? I think he's trying to keep from getting freight trained after Jr. got under him. Going to lose a spot. Jimmy Johnson, 48, under Kenseth for eighth. Here comes Kurt Busch, there's Jeff Green in the one, Dale Jarrett in the 88. Creeping into the picture. On board the big brown truck.
started in 27th spot, took just right side tires on his pit stop. Here's the eyeball cam. Uh, uh, back from popular demand from yesterday. Oh, uh, that's a great camera last night. On board with Jeff Fuller. Jeff got spun out twice in the NASCAR Bush Series race, and we had replays from this view, and you could see his eyes darting around and getting all big. It was really cool. See Dale Jarrett. Grinning and bearing it. Physical racetrack, boy, I'll tell you what. A war out after the race here. When those lights come across that visor, you see those eyes looking left out ahead of him around the corner as far as he can. And that's not very far here. So DJ picking up some track position in the early going. Sean Parker making the two-tire call. And Jared now racing in 12th position, trying to get 11th away from Jeff Green. Kevin Harvick separating themselves from the pack up front while we watch the racing back in traffic. Here's Kurt Busch trying to get eighth from Jimmy Johnson. And Matt Kenseth going to try to do the same thing. That, was close. that is close. And here's where it really gets close off his second corner. Now Jimmy Johnson says, okay, take it, uncle. And, and, and smart because he gave him the spot, got back in line, and didn't lose four or five other positions because there's a bunch of guys lined up behind him ready to train him back. And, you know, thinking about Michael Walsh or Jeff Green, when you're the guy on the inside, that can that can not work out for you also. You get squeezed too much, just like Michael, go down and touch that apron. Not a whole lot of room for error here. What's going on with the 48 car, Dave? Well, at first, Wally, they were tight from the center out the corner, so they raised the track bar on it. But they didn't like that too much. Now he's a little tight in. They want to kind of reverse that next time they come back down pit road. Yeah, and tight in at this place will get worse. Usually, the more rubber you put down, the car doesn't want to turn down into the bottom of the racetrack. So tight in is something that you kind of want to stay away from if you can. And Marty, how's Matt Kenseth doing? The car's a little bit loose, BP, but Wally talked about cars overheating here at Bristol. One of them is a 17, water 240 under the caution, oil 270, a little bit of a concern, but they need these green flag clouds. Matt. Kurt Busch running in the eighth position right ahead of his teammate. Earlier in the race, he just could not feel the tail of the race car. Made a track adjustment and an air pressure adjustment. The car is starting to come to him. A former Bristol winner would like to have something good happen here to end the week on a very good note, Bill. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car has been running hot, especially under caution, like you guys upstairs were talking about. Under Green, he said the car is pretty decent, a little tight when he's running up high. He said he learned a lot last night coaching Truex in the Bush race. Martin Truex Jr., who drove the Chance 2 car for Dale Jr. and um, Teresa Earnhardt in last night's NASCAR Bush Series race. You know, the, the overheating thing, we've heard a, a couple guys refer to that. Ryan Newman, Matt Kenseth now, Dale Jr. The pace speed here at Bristol is only 35 miles an hour. We got a lot of laps behind the pace car. Matt, Ricky Craven had a pretty good night. His first top 10 on the short tracks of 2003. Not a lot of radio conversation tonight to his team, but he did say the car was a tick tight on that first stop. They made an air pressure adjustment in the right front. It seems to have helped that tied race car. Ricky Craven with a very good run so far tonight here at Bristol. Started 14th up to 6th. Now have a seat. Dale Jarrett, the 88 car, gets on the inside of Jeff Green. And Wally, Green now is going to get on the outside and we're going to lose position after position. Ted Musgrave by in the seven. Tony Stewart, Laney, and the list goes on. Looks like, uh, yeah. There's Blaney, Ken Schrader coming through. One car getting shuffled back, Dave. Yeah, Alan, and they have not pitted yet. Just talked with Tony Gibson, his crew chief. They want to employ a two-stop strategy. Remember, they started way back, moved to the front, took the lead, but the car has been tight. They've not adjusted on it yet. And now the tires are old. 
And now the leaders are going to be getting, start to be coming up on him as he's only about a straightaway behind him. Jeff Gordon with Kevin Harvick right in tow, beginning to work through the end of the field. They're right up on Johnny Benson's back bumper. He's the last one on the lead lap in that 10 car. And he'll try and put the 31st place runner a lap down. So a little smoke coming out of the back of the 31 car. Yeah, it's smoking a lot now. Robbie Gordon. Robbie Gordon. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that. Jeff Gordon. Oh, is there ever? Look at the back of the singular car. And he's going to get black flagged. Robbie Gordon is for the smoke. And also Larry Foyt's going to get brought down. Pit road. Focus. Pretty lame up top, 45 up top, so up. What do you think? That rear end? Or? Oh, man. It's getting worse and worse. It looks like the rear gear. Yeah. You don't have to bring it in. It'll be the gear, Hamlet. It'll be yeah. the rear end. Got to be. Richard Childress there. <clears throat> Talking to his driver and his crew chief, Kevin Hamlin. Yeah. yeah, they're trying to figure it out. Robbie doesn't know what it is. They think it might be a gear in the back, but it doesn't smell like it down here. All right, so next lap, Robbie Gordon is going to see the black flag with the white cross, which means they will not be scoring him anymore until he answers the black flag. The sides of the tires look like they're wet. Yeah, it looks like they're like oil on them. All right, so Robbie Gordon answering the black flag here. And that million dollars appears to be safe. Bill? Drive it behind the wall there. Got his window net down, so he's not going far. Well, Cindy. Sorry. Sorry, Cindy. But it was fun. I'm sure. A great weekend here at Bristol for her. But uh, looks like the million dollars is going to stay put. What is it, like $10,000 to just, just for being here? How about the Home Depot Virtual Garage? Been talking about Robbie Gordon's brakes a lot. Well, you know, these brakes here, they need all this air that we can see in the hoses going back to keep them cool. We looked inside Kenny Waz's car and saw just how red the rotors would become. What they need is air to go through here and cool those rotors down. The problem, Wally, they don't want to give up that downforce and cut the holes in the front, so they got to put the air hoses behind the front bumper, and they're not getting as much air as they need. And, and another thing that they'll use is they use these blowers. They use these fans that they hung up, hook up, and try to force the air through, because although you're going pretty fast here, when you're in traffic, you don't get that much air into those brakes, so you're trying to pull it from anywhere you can. A yes. battle for third, fourth, and fifth right there. Skinner, the 0-1. The Army's got it. The Motorcraft, the Air Force is trying to take it away. Motorcraft, and then Mark Martin there. And they're in some pretty heavy traffic, which is what they're all kind of bottled up about. Jeff Gordon and Kevin Harvick had to slice their way through this group a couple of laps ago. See Ricky Craven and Dale Jr. And Scott Wimmer heading for pit road. There's Kurt Busch in the 97, following Dale Earnhardt Jr. through this traffic. So again, the race for third. I'll tell you guys, this 21 car, Rudd, is really, really good tonight. Robbie Gordon's behind the wall, Bill. What happened, Robbie? Well, burned the rear gear. Um, I don't know exactly why. Uh, shouldn't have happened. Yeah, pretty good race car. Um, Johnny Sauter was coming in, I was going out, and I got to keep knocking down. But we're good enough to get our last back. Just trying to race as clean as possible, and uh, broke a rear gear. Very disappointed. It is the gear. Well, we saw Ricky Rudd get the spot on Mike. Mark, Mike's struggling a little bit here in the 01 car, because now Mark is all over the back. It doesn't look like Mike can keep the car down on the bottom of the racetrack as well as he could earlier. 
You see that space there, just between where the pavement and the concrete racing surface separate. And Mike just not able to hook it like Mark Martin can. Jeff Gordon has led one in five laps that he's ever run here in his Winston Cup career. He's led 132 of the 148 tonight.